All right, one of my favorite dudes. Remember, you can watch Kevin and Chris Rose co-host Intentional Talk. And tomorrow, Kevin's going to be out at Yankee Stadium ahead of the Red Sox at Yankees game on MLB Network. Kevin Millar, brother, thanks for uh, thanks for making time. Hey, thanks for having me, brother. It's been a while. It has been. All right, so much to get to. Let, let's start with the Rays. Let's give the Rays some love. Not only are they hot out of the gates this year, you go back to August of last season, one of the hottest teams in baseball. If you, if you include that stretch of last season, Kevin, that's a pretty big sample size. Are you buying the idea that the Rays could be legit? Yeah, they've been legit for a long time and haven't gotten credit for it. Even when Joe Madden days, when they had the young David Price and James Shields and all those guys, they won 90 games a year, but it's Red Sox, Yankees that dominate that division and conversation. Now you look up, they're not fake good. I mean, Kevin Cash has done such a great job with getting these guys to kind of believe they have this system. They started this bullpen by committee, starter, bullpen guy, or whatever you want to call it, it's worked. They've given up 40 runs, I think, through the first whatever games they played. Uh, and you know what? You look at this team, they're not fake good. They're in a tough division. They're going to play the Yankees and Red Sox a lot, but they're going to compete. Are they going to win this division will be the question. Everybody wants to know, are the Rays for real? They're for real for the postseason. They're for real for a playoff spot. I don't know if they're for real yet to win the East. They'd have to prove that to me this year. But right now, the way the Red Sox and Yankees are playing, maybe they are for real. All right, Kevin, so it's, it's early. Red Sox off to a slow start, playing a little bit better. Yankees have been seriously felled by injuries so far. MLB Network's got Red Sox at Yankees tomorrow. Do either of these teams' fan bases, Red Sox, Yankees, have anything to actually worry about at this stage of the season? No, I, I think, obviously, the Red Sox start last year, they dominated early on. Then they went on to win the World Series in 2018. This year, I'll speak on them, you know, the Chris Sale thing, it, it, it makes you scratch your head. He's even scratching his head. He said it personally. He's never felt like this. He's never had this happen to me. He's never pitched like this. So that'll make you scratch your head. The bullpen might make you scratch your head because they don't have a bona fide closer. So those are the two things. I'm not worried about Nathan Evaldi. I'm not worried about David Price or Rick Porcello or Erod. That's fine. Offensively, as it gets hotter there, they're going to be banging balls off the green monster, Xander and Mookie and J.D. Martinez. I'm not worried about that. I am concerned a little bit about Chris Sale and concerned about the closure role. You, the Yankee side, this bullpen's been, you know, the, the, the talk of the town since they signed everybody, and it hasn't been quite there yet. Their starting staff now does, con, con, does concern me a little bit. Severino, the depth that he gave you, seven-plus innings, uh, you know, every, every time he went out there, that's not there. His injury concerns me because now you got Tanaka and the CC and guys that, you know, they're looking to go five-plus now at this point in their career. So that, that'll be interesting to watch. I think once they get healthy offensively, they're a scary team. Uh, so I'm not concerned there. This is the first two weeks of the season that's always fun to talk about. Kevin, you played, obviously, for, for a long time. As a player, how long has to go by in the season that you start to actually believe in your team if things are going well or you start to get worried if things aren't? How big of a sample size do players actually take seriously when they say, okay, this might be who we are? Yeah, I would say a half. It's not, it's not six weeks. I mean, you'll hear people say six weeks. That's still young in the season. 162 games is a lot of baseball, right? And especially you're coming off 30 in spring training. So you're looking at 200 games. People ask how long does it take for an offensive player to kind of be ready. 30 to 40 at bats, and then you're kind of ready. But sometimes you get up to a hot start, and sometimes you get up to a slow start. But I'd say a half because I'm only speaking with experience on a team's aspect is that in 04, we were kind of spinning our wheels. You know, we were like a 500 ball club, and it was kind of like whatever, whatever. All of a sudden, Theo makes a trade here, and Orlando Cabrera comes jogging into our locker room and trades Nomar Garcia Parra, who was like trading, you know, Ted Williams at that time. And so you look up, and we had a nice second half. You start believing in each other, and all of a sudden, boom, we we're world champions. We made it as a wild card, and then, you know, doing our thing. But I, I don't think any team's going to sit here and go, ah, this is who we are after April if they're struggling. Or – after May, but I think sometime in June and July, then you're starting, okay, we need to either make an adjustment, a change, or some teams might be trading. All right, so it's early. If you're the Mariners organization, are you trying to keep the optimism in check, or do you think what we've seen from them early on, I think second best run differential in baseball right now, does that indicate maybe Seattle is going to be a competitor this year? 
No, I think it's a great story early on. I think offensively they can hit. I don't think anybody's going to maintain this offensive scene because if that's the case, there's going to be guys on pace to drive in 200 RBIs and, and, you know, hit 85 home runs. So at some point that'll come down to normal, and that's why they called an average, and that's not talking bad about the Mariners. I love these kind of stories in baseball, teams that kind of like, wow, maybe they're not as bad as people thought they were going to be. Their bullpen's a scary scene. They can't close baseball games out there. So long term, that's where it'll sting them. Long term, that's where it'll sting them. You can kind of mask it early on when you out hit the opponent by a lot and you hit home runs in 18 straight games. But long term, the bullpen will be, you know, magnified. And I think that's where, uh, you know, if they win 80 some odd games, that's going to be a great season. They didn't go in this year trying to plan to win the World Series. Good things can happen and players kind of have good years. But I think the Mariners, you know, they're not planning on making the postseason. Kevin, last year we saw Atlanta be pretty interesting for a lot of people, surprised some folks. A lot of young guys really got in their groove early on. Do you see a team around Major League Baseball, whether it's the Padres or another organization, that's going to make a big leap this year in large part because of some young guys in that farm system as it makes its way to the majors? You just named the San Diego Padres of that team. I, I, I look at this club. First of all, that division's not as good as it's been. Arizona's not going to be as good as they are or they have been. Uh, the Rockies are obviously struggling right now. They'll, they'll, they'll turn it around, but they're not quite where they want to be. The Giants aren't going to be where they're at. And the Dodgers, you know, the Dodgers are going to be solid. But there are some concerns there with Clayton Kershaw making his first start tonight. Their starting staff, you never know. Uh, bullpen on that side, Kenley Jansen hasn't had the velocity. Long term, does that, does that, you know, we'll see what happens there. But I look at the Padres, they have so many young guys that you just don't know. We, we know Tatis Jr., we know Manny Machado, we know Hosmer and the guys. But they have some nice young pitchers. They have some nice, uh, a nice nucleus of, uh, of some talent. So now it takes a couple guys having career years, like we saw the Braves do with Acuna Jr. and obviously Albies. And they came up and you're like, wow, this is kind of a good club. Now you're throwing a hard thrower out of the bullpen that no one knows about. Next thing you know, they can be a team that might make the postseason. All right, Kevin, I'm a, I'm a Cubs fan, so help me here. Be, sh sh shoot straight with me. Should I temper my expectations as a Cubs fan, or is everything going to be fine in Chicago for that organization this year? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's the one scr head scratcher right now. Where are the Cubs at? I mean, Joe Madden doesn't have a contract, so we've been talking about that, okay? Theo Epstein, is he getting irritated because there's no edge in that clubhouse? Uh, you know, are they good or are they not good? This isn't 2016 anymore, I said the other day on the show. You know, so I don't know where the Cubs are at, to be honest with you. I, 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 I love the Cubs. I, the relationships that I have with the Cubs, with Jed and Theo and John Lester, you know, it's a boys club type scene. But I look around there, I don't know if they're better than the Milwaukee Brewers. And I don't know if they're better than the St. Louis Cardinals. So where are the Cubs at? Pirates are a very sneaky, underrated team. That starting staff. So... Uh, you know, the, the U Darvish situation, he's got to be better. He's got to be better. He's got to be healthy. He's got to pitch better for them to be good. Cole Hamels, awesome. He threw a great game there at night. John Lester's injuries, no problem. He had a double in the gap, hurt his little hamstring. Uh, but he'll be back, so it's not arm issues. But U Darvish concerns me. Uh, and their bullpen concerns me. You know, it's, it, you know, Morals, you know, been on the DL. And, you know, who closes game for them? Their offense has to bang the baseball. And they've been doing a good job of swinging the bats, but, but they're going to have to bang the baseball a year. All right, Kevin, last question for you. Just best guess, maybe a fit you see as we get a sense of teams. Where do you think Dallas Keuchel is going to end up whenever he finds a, finds a home for this season? It's, it's interesting because, you know, you got Dallas Keuchel and you got Craig Kimbrell out there, and it's like the longer that he stays out, there's teams that are going to really need him, right? I, I thought Dallas would end up with the Braves this offseason because they need that bona fide kind of like veteran starter. And I think he's a great fit for five or six teams. Obviously, financially, that's what, what, what this gap's about. As soon as Patrick Corbin got that $140 million deal, I think that Dallas might, might have been asking for that deal. And I don't know. I'm not an agent. I'm just saying if the money's there, I think he would have been signed. So who knows what the asking price comes down to. And then you look at a guy like Craig Kimbrell. I mean, there's a lot of teams. You know, the Knabel injury happens in Milwaukee. They'd be a perfect situation for there. The Dodgers might can use a Kimbrell. Uh, it'll be real interesting where those guys end up. I do think that they're going to play this year, yes. And I do think that, you know, some teams are going to be happy having both of them. But right now, it's kind of like that line's drawn and they're not going to play unless that money's right. 
We'll be watching Kevin, you, and Chris on Intentional Talk. We're checking you out. Red Sox at Yankees from on MLB Network. Always good talking to you, Kevin Millar. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making time. Really, thanks a lot, bro. I appreciate it.